Hi everyone, this is Alice K. Ruckelhouse from Threshold of Hineni, and Happy New Year! Um, I don't usually do a video until Thursday. I try to do it on Monday and Thursday, but because today is January 1st and we're starting this devotional series, I wanted to go ahead and get a video out first thing in the morning on New Year's Day so that those of you who want to have your devotions first thing in the morning will have an idea of what to do. Um, obviously, if you're following your own method, that's great. Go ahead and do that. And please feel free to share about what you're doing and what God shows you in it. Um, but today I'm going to share what I did this morning and um, and just kind of share with you how I'm doing my devotions this month. So yeah, it's New Year's Day. I get to wear my Dear Santa I Can Explain t-shirt one last time. <laughs> and then it goes up in the attic with all the Christmas decorations and sorry about my hair, but I just got out of the shower and I was just too excited to wait. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what I do for devotions is I start out by praying and asking God to show me what he wants me to see in my reading for that day. And I might pray about some other things. If I'm really stressed out or something, then um, I have some other things that I do to kind of get myself focused. And I'll probably share about that another time, but I don't want to clutter things today. Um, I'll also be sharing some tips throughout the month of ways that you can have devotions if you're like really busy, like especially a young mom or something. Um, but today let's just focus on what I did for my devotions just to kind of get you started if you're just starting out with me today. Okay, so the first thing that I did after praying and asking God to show me what he wanted me to learn was I went ahead and I read the scripture portion. And I'm using, I did a video about this. So if you want more information about this illuminated Bible, it's very cool. It's just Ephesians, very thin, so it's not overwhelming. I can take it in my purse with me or anything. Um, and so I read the chapter. Now, as I explained in an earlier video, I chose to use a theme of my position in Christ for this whole month in Ephesians and looking to see what God's showing me about my position in Christ. Um, I'm also looking for things that help me with serenity because that's my character quality goal for the month. And you don't have to have a character quality goal for the month. That's something that I'm doing with my spiritual journey group. And I'm going to share a little bit about that today too, because it, it's part of my devotions. So this is kind of a combined meeting of the devotion people in Ephesians and the spiritual journey people. Um, so I'll share about that as I go through all this. So I read the chapter and one of the things that I like to do is when something really strikes me, I like to highlight it like this. Um, and sometimes I highlight with like a highlighter, you know, in a color or something, but doing this, making it bold is really easy to do. You just draw over the letters with your pen and you can see, you know, it's not perfect. I've learned that I really truly do not have to be perfect and it's okay. <laughs> And I get so much more done and I have so much more peace in my life because of that now. So what I highlighted because I prayed and asked God to show me what he wanted me to see today. And I was looking for just one thing because I want to keep it really simple. If I look for a whole bunch of things, I'm not likely to remember that. I'm not likely to really apply those things. I do much better if I just find one thing. So actually this time it was two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did read through the whole chapter. I know that I've mentioned before about how sometimes I'll stop when God shows me something, but I want to read through the whole chapter each day uh, this month. So that's what I'm doing is once I find it and I bold it like that, um, then I'm going ahead and reading the rest of the chapter, but then I come back to this. And what stood out to me today was that he has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing and that he chose us in him. And that was a really big deal to me. And um, you'll see that as I share with you what I wrote. Okay, so then over here in this illuminated Ephesians journal, what they do is on one side of the page, it's scripture and on the other side of the page, it's blank. Uh, so that, and it's got little dots. I don't know if you can see those, but it's got little dots. So you can draw in there or you can write. And today I wrote 
January 1, 2019. I got the year right. That's yay me. <laughs> um, Ephesians 1, 3, and 4, because that's where these verses are from. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, and then these little numbers are the verse numbers. So 3 and 4. Okay, so what I wrote is, Father, when I read that you've blessed me with every spiritual blessing, my heart jumps in joy. But then I think, no, that can't be for me. Then reading that you chose me and knowing that you knew everything about me before you chose me, wow, what do you see in me, Lord? Okay, so I'm being really vulnerable here. <laughs> but I'm being vulnerable because I want to show you a couple of things. Okay, first of all, yes, I'm talking to God. I write Father. Because for me, my devotions... And this is where, for me, it's different than Bible study. And for everybody, Bible study and devotions are different. But this is just kind of my philosophy. When I'm doing Bible study, yes, I pray about it. Yes, I talk to God about it. But mainly, I'm looking to learn about Him. Whereas in devotions, I'm looking to spend time with Him. It's like being on a date with my husband. And um, so I'm talking to Him. And we're talking back and forth because... He talks to me through his word, through the Bible, and then I talk to him in my prayer, in my heart, in what I write, and sometimes then he'll talk to me more through scripture. Sometimes he'll, we'll have a conversation in my heart where just like in that, in his still small voice, he says things to me that I'm not going to say to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, he's talking to me and he's showing me things and we're having a conversation. Um, it's not spooky like I hear a voice or anything like that. It's just, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of, for me, it's kind of a sense of not even words, but a sense. Um, and so I, I know what he's trying to show me and trying to say to me. Okay, so, um, so I wrote this to him. The other thing that I want to show you is that I'm being really honest with God. Okay, I'm not trying to be all holy and super spiritual. First of all, I'm not using the and thou and all that kind of stuff. But also, I'm not trying to hide my true feelings from him. He knows my feelings anyway. If you want to know more about that, read Psalm 139. And um, the first, I don't know, five or six verses talk about that. It talks about how he knows everything about us. He knows what we're going to say before we even say it. He reads our thoughts from afar. So there's nothing that I can hide from him. In fact, he knows more about me than I know. And so when I share these things with him, it's not a shock. He's not going, oh, how dare you think that? He's just going, no, I'm glad that you finally realized that. <laughs> and it's more really like I'm admitting it to myself more than to him uh, because I'm just, I'm being honest with him so we can deal with this. I know when I write, wow, what do you see in me, Lord? And it's really hard for me to accept that you want to give me every spiritual blessing. I know in my head that that's not true. I know that he really has given me every spiritual blessing, but in my heart, it's really hard for me to accept that, especially given the last few years that I've had where I had a lot of people <laughs> try to convince me that God doesn't love me and that I'm horrible and worthless and so on and so forth. And I've kind of bought into that in some ways. And, um, and so I think what God's trying to do right now is undo all that damage. Okay, so in here, in this illuminated journal, I don't have a lot of space to write because over this month, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this chapter five different times because we've got 31 days in the month and there's only six chapters. So if I read a chapter a day, then we're going to read this five times, which is pretty awesome because we're going to get a lot out of it and we're going to really get to know Ephesians overall this way. And then if you want to study it in addition to that, that's even better. Okay, so so I've written just a little bit in here, but I, I decided today that I wanted to go into more detail and really discuss this with the Lord some more. So I wrote in my journal, I got this really cool journal um, through Amazon. I can link it below if I remember to. If I don't and you're interested, let me know and I'll link it for you. Um, it's, it's just a really nice size and it feels really good and everything. And it's got little verses on the bottom of the pages, which a lot of times really fit with what I'm writing about. <laughs> In fact, I didn't look at the verse at the bottom of the page today, but here's what it says. 
if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him who believeth, to him that believeth. And so when I'm talking about here about having a hard time believing this, that really fits with it. Okay, so I'm going to read to you what I wrote in here. I'm going to skip a couple of things, not because I want to hide them, because like I said, I want to be really transparent, but because um, I, I don't believe in hanging other people's dirty laundry out there, and some of this has to do with things that people have said and done to me in the past few years. So I'm going to skip those parts, but otherwise I'm going to read to you what I wrote here. Okay, so I have Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. I read that you've blessed me with every spiritual blessing. There's a part of me that has a very difficult time accepting that, Lord. Surely that's for everyone else and not me. No one else believes that you've blessed me. Obviously, I'm exaggerating there. I feel like no one believes, but my husband believes, my best friend believes, <laughs> maybe a few others, I don't know. <laughs> but it feels like everyone. And like I said, I'm just being honest with God about my feelings. They all say that I'm cursed, that I'm completely unworthy of your love. I'm so horrible that they won't even tell me why or what I've done. I know this, of course, in my mind, but it's so hard for me to fathom. Why would you choose me? What is wrong with you, Lord? Don't you know? And again, God's not shocked. He doesn't feel insulted by what I'm sharing because he already knows how I'm feeling in my heart. And he wants me to be open with him so we can work through this and he can help me work through it. The shock of my disrespect towards you brings the answer. Yes, you know, of course you do. But then why would you choose me, this person who is so patently unlovable and has been practically since I was born? And I realize with stunning clarity, it's not about who I am, but about who you are. I'm not sure why, but that suddenly brings it all into perspective. People's rejection of me isn't about who I am, but who they are, just as my rejection of anyone else is not about them, but about me. It's a distortion of your image in us, the way our acceptance and love of others reflects our own hearts. You and your unfailing goodness reflect love in your dealings with me. I and my dealings with others reflect insecurity and sometimes anger. I immediately want to judge them for their misjudgment of me and the pain they've caused. Forgive me, Father, that's not my place. I realize I will never be fully whole or functional until I understand, accept, and embrace who I really am in you. This is key because until I have the resulting peace, love, and strength that come from that position, my screwed up views of myself will only be reflected in how I view others. I am your beloved for reasons beyond me and not about me. Okay, so you can kind of see the journey that the Lord and I took in this conversation. I didn't just sit and write this straight through. I wrote some parts and then I sat there and I waited and I felt like God was responding to me and showing me things and leading me through this process of coming to realize that this isn't about me. It's really about his love for me. And then also seeing how that relates to how I then respond to other people and about how important it is to understand my true position in Christ and to be able to reflect that to others instead of hurting others the way that I've also been hurt. Um, so, and, you know, and you can see a similar progress when you read a lot of David's Psalms in the Bible. Um, he, he starts out angry or depressed or... Um, calling down God's wrath on people and wanting them destroyed and everything. And God works him through this process where he helps him to get things in line with the way that God wants him to be. And as we continue to do that, it becomes more and more real in our hearts. <laughs> it's, it's like the Holy Spirit is doing that work and helping us to build that in and helping to build that in us. Um, it's the other thing is sometimes you may go through something like this at one point and then years down the road you have to learn it again or maybe you learn it on a different level i find that a lot of times in my spiritual life um, i'll learn something on this level and then maybe a couple years later it spirals back to that same thing but it's on a higher level and then other times I have to go back and learn a brand new thing all over again. Um, maybe something I've learned before or maybe something that's brand new to me. Uh, but God's just always revealing those things. 
So, so that's what I did here. And sometimes I write quite a few pages, sometimes not at all in this other journal. Oh, also, <laughs> okay, so this is kind of a weird thing about me. Please don't feel like you have to do this. Don't feel like you have to write in a journal at all either. Just, you know, just read and just get what God's saying to you. It helps to write it down. I really want to encourage you to write it down somehow. But even if it's just a sentence or two, that's fine. Uh, for me, I really have to write things to be able to integrate them into my life. Um, okay, so then I also, in my spiritual journey journal, uh, for those of you who are doing this, I wrote a summary. So true serenity depends, oh, I didn't get an S in there, so... True serenity depends on knowing who I am in Christ, Ephesians 1. So I'm just doing a one-sentence summary of what my devotions are in there. And then also today, um, just kind of for fun, <laughs> I've been learning about junk journals, and I really, really, really like them. And so I started doing that. Um, I've got one that I'm doing for serenity. And so today... Here on this page, I wrote, I can only have true serenity when I know and embrace myself as you know and embrace me, God. When I do, I'm able to see everything around me through that lens and not take others' rejection so personally. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies because he chose me, Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. And that's not a quote from Ephesians 1, 3, and 4, but it's my summary of the main points of those verses. And then I have a little cross that I made from a palm branch one year and that's going in there because who I am in Christ really depends on what he did for us and dying for us. So that's what I did today. Uh, this video has gotten to be much longer than I wanted it to be so I'm going to stop here um, but I will be putting out another video on Thursday. Uh, hopefully, I can't promise this, but hopefully it will be up on YouTube around 1230 or so um, Eastern time. 12:30 uh, p.m. after lunch, Eastern time, and then I should be posting it um, on Facebook on my author page around three or so. All right, thanks for joining me. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.